Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Prime News. Uh, we got, what, five or six big stories uh, for you today on this Monday. Uh, before we get into that, I do have to remind you, we do have two copies of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury that's being given away this week. There is still time to enter. Head down to the description or the pinned comment to find out how. Now, our first story deals with Terria, Taria. I always mispronounce it. It's a fairly popular indie game that's basically on every platform and was planning to release on Google Stadia. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Andrew Spinks, the main developer, founder, everything behind the game, uh, has been having a lot of issues with his Google account. Uh, it's actually been disabled for three weeks and he hasn't been able to, let's just say, get a satisfactory response or in some cases any response from Google themselves. He hasn't broken any of the terms of service as far as he can tell and doesn't understand why it's taking so damn long to get his Google account sorted out. Uh, so because of that, he has decided, you know what? Screw you, Google. I am no longer going to use your services. And beyond that, I'm going to actually not release my game on Google Stadia because he does not want to show any support whatsoever for Google. Uh, I find this to be a, an interesting decision, a little bit anti-consumer in a way, because I do think that we need to be a little bit more understanding of uh, both sides of the story here. For starters, we are in the middle of a pandemic, and admittedly, I've had my issues getting hold of Google as well, but they also have cut back their support staff quite you know, massively. Now, I understand his perspective. He runs his business through there. So he's had a, a Google email for 15 years with all his contacts he can't access right now. Uh, he can't access any of the apps on the App Store on his phone because he got them all registered through there. Now, I could argue maybe he should have a separate business account from personal because it kind of sounds like he's just been using the one account to do everything, whereas like I have separate emails for this exact reason, because hey, I got my personal email and then the business email, Nathan at NintendoPrime.net, and then I got a personal, I got a couple personal emails. But that's just me. Um, not everybody does that, even when I feel like they should, uh, just for logistical reasons. You shouldn't, as an example, the account that you're running all your apps on your phone shouldn't be the same account you're using to run your company. Um, that's just my opinion. But honestly, I'm sure Google will get a hold of him. Whether or not it gets sorted out, whether or not he goes back on this and decides, hey, look, we're going to uh, bring the game back to Google Stadia, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of petty, but also I understand the frustration. When you, you know, when we were having the issue where Google, you know, literally jacked four thousand dollars from this YouTube channel over the course of a month and a half just because they claimed we were breaking terms of service, uh, not with the giveaways, not with anything crazy going on that you could maybe potentially argue breaks terms of service. No, we got having bots they claimed our views were bots and uh that i was paying a company to bot my channel conveniently around the time the super mario 3d all-stars came out and my videos were blowing up because of that and i had nothing to do with it to be honest i think anything 3d all-stars that month was blowing up back in september but it doesn't matter it can be very difficult to get a hold of people but if i'm able to get a hold of managers through persistency and through multiple methods i think he could have too I think one thing he never tried is reaching out on Twitter. Uh, it's weird, but Twitter's support actually responds like instantly in comparison to emailing them. Should it be that way? I have no idea, but maybe they just didn't cut back their, their support team that runs those Twitter accounts. Anyways, I'm sure it'll all get sorted out, but for now, Terry is no longer coming to Google Stadia because the guy running it has his account blocked or banned or something with no explanation. So I had a look at this story a couple times because I thought this was just a booster box. So what we're talking about here is the Pokemon TCG, the trading card game that I played a ton back in the day. I still own several cards from back in the day, including some first edition ones. And we're, this is important because we're talking about a sale that went down that set a new record for Pokemon trading cards. So the entire complete first edition set of Pokemon. So this is back, way back in the day, first edition. We all know about the first edition Charizards. We're talking the entire base first edition set from 1999 has been sold at auction for 
thousand dollars it is a new all-time record for pokemon card sales and when i saw it i thought this was just a first edition box because the box prices have been skyrocketing ever since youtuber logan paul got into the business we've been seeing prices at 300 400 450 thousand dollars so i thought this was like another first edition um just you know random pack box set but nope this is actually the complete set uh, which there are very few complete sets that actually exist. Now, what's special about this one and what probably what drove that price is that every card in the set is rated a 10 mint. It is literally the best rating you can get in the trading card space. And to have the entire set like that, it's a pretty rare collection indeed. So uh, yeah, obviously first edition Charizard's in there and that card alone can net him back almost half of what he spent because that card is just so incredibly valuable. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting just to see that this is a thing that the Pokemon like collecting is just getting more and more popular. And it's not even just the old stuff, the evolution set. There's been a lot of Pokemon card sets that are just skyrocketing in price because Pokemon is just becoming as popular as it's ever been. It's like the trading card business has just come full circle and here we go again it's the 90s all over again it's the early 2000s and pokemon trading cards are the hot thing in the market so we finally have sort of kind of a roundabout update on bayonetta 3 at least why we're not hearing anything about bayonetta 3 because people were worried man development must not be going well for bayonetta 3 we haven't heard a damn thing about it and yeah sure hideki kami every now and then would be like oh development's going well but it's the same update he's been given for three years so is it really going well or is there problems in paradise well um hideki kamiya and atushi anaba two of the founders of platinum games we did in a recent interview where they talked about their upcoming game they are self-publishing called Project GG. And they talked about, hey, why are we talking about this game? Well, because we're self-publishing and we can talk about it. And Hideki Kamiya went as far to say, hey, look, I can literally post a screenshot, a tweet. I can do say anything I want because this is our game. They noted... And this is where Bayonetta 3 comes in, why they can't talk about other projects they're working on. And that's because the ability to talk about them, advertise, say anything, is up to the publisher. So in this case, the reason we have heard nothing about Bayonetta 3 since it was announced is because Nintendo told them you can't say anything. Uh, in fact, the words Hideki Kamiya uses to say, Development is going well is the stock standard response, Nintendo okayed. So in other words, development might be going well or it might not be going well, we wouldn't know, but we're not gonna find out about it from the people actually making the game because Nintendo said we wanna control everything and we don't wanna talk about it. So for all we know, Bayonetta 3 could literally be done. It could be finished, gone gold, 100% complete, and we wouldn't even know because Nintendo's gonna decide we want to release it at this year, this slot, this, you know, we pick and choose where they want to put things. So yeah, for all we know, Bayonetta 3 is done. But uh, again, we don't really get to control when we hear about it uh, and nor do the people making it. So it is what it is. So Halo might be coming to Switch or maybe even PlayStation 5. I'm, I'm not even sure exactly where. Uh, basically, they do updates on this place called Halo Waypoint, where they give you updates on whether or not the game's being patched, whether or not the game uh, is getting new features and all that upcoming things with the series. And in their most recent one they put out on Friday, there was a one little line in there, just one tiny itty bitty piece that says, hey, you know, maybe a new way to play in a new form. So kind of like, hey, maybe on Switch. Now, the reason Switch is brought up for this so much is because Switch has long been rumored and speculated to be getting Halo games since Microsoft has been putting some of their indie games on there and it would make sense for like a Master Chief kind of collection game to be on Switch because it's not really a direct competitor to what Microsoft is offering and it doesn't really affect their you know their cloud games X Cloud or Game Pass like people aren't people aren't going to go out of their way to not buy an Xbox or not get get Game Pass or X Cloud to play the games on Switch it's just if you already have an audience for your games on Switch, why not just bring over your older ones? We're not talking about getting the next Halo game, Halo Infinite on Switch. That's No one's talking about that, but it would be kind of cool if you could go back and play some of the classics in some form. Uh, so I don't know, that's just something that's out there. I personally am not sure if that one line even really means anything. If we're just completely honest as gamers, it could literally just be talking about VR. Uh, it could just be talking about, um, you know, I don't even know. 
bring, bringing out xCloud on a different platform. So like xCloud right now is in beta on Android phones. So maybe they're just talking about, hey, delivering it to xCloud on new platforms, new ways to play. I have no idea. Um, it could mean literally anything, but obviously people are talking Switch because, you know, we kind of want Halo on Switch if we're just being completely honest. AMD's answer to DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling, has been in the works for a little bit of time, and it was announced at the same time the 6000 series of graphic cards were announced. And I want to glance at my notes quick on this because there's a couple particulars I wanted to get right here. First up, their answer is being called Fidelity FX Super Resolution, and we're talking about this because of an AMD leaker called Pro hard ver uh who has actually been really really accurate with amd leaks in the past and what this person has said is that we are going to get their super fidelity thing happening this spring this is important because for now the big massive advantage nvidia has with their 3000 series of cards or 2000 series of cards is deep learning super sampling the ability to essentially put a game out at 1080p but super sample it up to 4k with very little noticeable degradation in quality and then you're able to get really really good frame rates right now it's a technology that amd doesn't have and it's interesting because amd's gpus their new line the 6800 6800 xt 6900 xt are actually really really good cards that are massively viable alternatives to the 3000 series of gpus but without dlss for gamers it can be kind of a uh, maybe we should hold out. Well, when this comes out, which supposedly the earliest it might be arriving is March, uh, we can obviously expect to see very similar technology that DLSS is. Now, how well it works, I don't know. It really took until DLSS 2.0 before DLSS started actually being viable. So I don't know how many iterations of this it's going to take. It'd be interesting if AMD gets it right right away, since AMD traditionally has had driver and other issues that it takes years for them to sort out. I run a 5700 XT in my editing rig, and literally the GPU really wasn't even viable to last year because it took several driver updates to make it work. But anyways, yeah, AMD is getting in on the DLSS game with their own technology, and it looks like it's happening pretty soon. All right, so Daniel Ahmed, otherwise known as Z Huge X, uh, he has put out there some sales figures for the Microsoft Series S slash X. Uh, essentially, he said the Microsoft Series S slash X has shipped 3.5 million. He didn't really say that number. He said about 1 million less than the PlayStation 5. And we know the PlayStation 5 shipped 4.5 million. So that puts Microsoft right around 3.5 million. Now, we're never going to get exact figures because... Phil Spencer and Microsoft said, hey, we're not going to give exact sales data on our systems anymore. Of course, you say that if somehow Series S and X passes 100 million, you know we're going to hear about it. But uh, they have actually technically talked about how well the system is being sold. In fact, they stated as recently as two weeks ago that the Microsoft Series S slash X is <coughs> the most successful launch of a Microsoft platform in the console space history. It has gone on to have the best dollar sales and the best unit sales. So what we know is it is the fastest selling Xbox basically ever released. Kudos to them for that. Obviously, just like the PlayStation 5, we, there's always these talk about PlayStation 5 stock, PlayStation 5 stock. The Xbox Series S and X is out of stock as well. Every unit coming off that manufacturing line is gone. So as fast as they can make them is as fast as they are selling. And they're doing this without a killer game. Like at least you can look towards PlayStation 5 and be like, look, well, you know, we, you have the better version of Miles Morales. But beyond that, there is, you know, Demon Souls or whatever, Dark Souls. You know, we, have, we have a game there that people will want to play that you can only play on PlayStation 5. Then again, Microsoft recently watched them launch the medium. Not, you know, the same tier of game, more indie, more high-end indie, but I think it's pretty good. I know review ratings have it down in like the 70s, but I've been playing it a little bit. I think it's pretty good. I don't know. I'm just saying I really like some of the mechanics in that game, that, that nice horror game, but it is a horror game, which tend not to be the most popular of games. But I, I'm just throwing out there that the sales are looking good for everyone. Everyone's selling well. Like, can we literally just say at this point, in February of 2021, all three major platform holders are selling well. Remember, this is an industry where traditionally only two platforms can sell well, not three. And right now we have three selling 
like ballers, man. Just ballin'. Shot calling, 20 inch rim. All right, anyway, so thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Vendor Over Jets from Nintendo Prime. That's all I got for you guys today. We'll be back with another Prime News episode tomorrow. I'm um, hoping you're liking my coat down here. It's kind of chilly, so I'm going to style it up a little bit. Wear a nice little jacket. All right, guys, I will catch you in the next video.